Okay. This is this is future me watching this back now. And remembering Oh it takes a long time to clean models. I'm doing thirteen orcs here. I've already picked out their parts, I've already you know, checked their poses, um, blue tacking everything together, and now I'm literally just cleaning them. These old orc kits have a lot of mold lines and a lot of gaps that often need filling. And everybody always underestimates exactly how long it takes them to clean a model. Um, some people don't clean models, and that's up to you if you just want to get models on the tabletop fast, and so be it. Personally, I always estimate that it takes me at least 20 minutes to clean one regular infantry-sized model, and it usually takes me about half an hour for something like a Space Marine or something like that. But these old kits take even longer than that because this is before Games Workshop got really good at hiding mold lines. So there's just mold lines like all the way up one side of the leg, across the bottom, and down the other side of the leg, and also around the inside of the crotch. You gotta clean them all. You gotta clean them all. Because otherwise when you're painting it and you just see it and just go, that is a mold line, all I can see is the mold line, the mold line looks horrible. Everyone on the internet is going to say, hey, if we got a mold line. Um, so yeah, it probably took, well, actually, I think I did this, this whole footage is running at 2000% speed, so 20 times speed. And the footage for just cleaning is, uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly how long at the moment. We'll find out together. But it took me hours to clean all of these models to a satisfactory point. And some of the stuff I'm using, I'm using the X-Acto blade. Um, it's just got it in a black handle. I'm using some needle files, that's what I'm using there. And I'm also using some um, sanding pads, which are very, very fine grit. They're good for polishing stuff off. Very good for smoothing out uh, some bad cuts if you're using a particularly blunt knife, or also for smoothing out the rough surface that a file sometimes leaves behind. I'm also using a toothbrush to clean off some random bits of plastic and stuff so I can see what I'm doing. But that's, you know, there's so many parts and there's so many mold lines across everything that it just takes a really, really long time. So, for example, when I'm doing a commission, I always ask people if they're going to send me the models cleaned and prepared and assembled, because if they aren't, I have to charge for that. Because assembling, say, a squad of five models and cleaning them takes about an hour, hour and a half. And, you know, that adds up, especially over the course of painting an entire army. In this instance, I think it took me about three to four hours to actually fully clean and drill everything. You can see I drilled out the uh, exhaust ports on the rockets that are on the backpack, because they're not drilled out, but logically they'd be there. I drilled all the bowels and all of the guns, even the Grotz blasters, they got drilled out. Everything got sanded down, and yeah, th these old kits, the mold lines are just absolutely awful. So let's go, let's go over what I'm building for this team, for this uh, kill team. It's 100 points. There is a orc knob with a combi scorcher. Um, there is a uh, spanner with custom mega blaster. A burner boy a looter, a orc gunner with big shooter, an orc gunner with a rocket launcher, I think four orc boys all with shooters, one orc commando, um, and three grots, one of which is a grot from Forge World, which is made of resin, and I'm going to be using him as the leader in the kill team. So the actual models I'm using though, I'm are mostly being built out of my orcs bits box. I have an orc army, um, which is a vast majority of it is unpainted. Um, but I, it results in me having a lot of bits left over. Um, for example, I've had a box of burner boys, and I don't like the looter arms, um, the big metal cage that the looters have for their guns. Didn't like that. Do like the guns to some point, some degree. They're a bit busy for my tastes, but 
I like them. I did try converting um, a looter that was going to kind of have a auto Imperial Guard auto cannon. They're going to be fine from the hip. Didn't work out. Um, did a whole lot of different experiments, cutting up lots of models, sticking them together. Ended up just going with um, just using the def gun and a different arm um, for that, and also a different backpack. I think I'm actually using one of the big shooter backpacks that comes in the boy sprue. The orc knob is from the orc knobs kit, um, and I will actually have already painted that. I painted that like uh, six months previous, um, just for funsies. And so you're not going to be seeing a lot of him in this video, but he he does show up later on. And all of the backpacks have to be drilled and pinned to be attached because none of them are actually supposed to go onto the torsos that I've decided they're going to go onto. So not just lots of cleaning work, lots of converting work, and um, lots of barrels to be drilled. Also lots of drilling holes so that I can m mount everything on corks, and also mount all the heads on corks because everything is being painted separately. Um, I'm going to be gluing the legs to and the torsos together and that's it. Everything else is separate. In, you know, the shooter arms, everything. So you're going to be seeing all of this on a lot of corks. I actually think I'm mounting them on corks right now. Um, so that I can paint everything separately. And it is actually going to be faster doing it that way um, for the quality of paint job that I'm looking for. I'm, I'm like, I'm painting 13 models. I want to paint you know them to a decent standard. And not just, you know, knock them out over a weekend. I could have just knocked them out for over a weekend. But I wouldn't have been happy with them. Um, in the long run. And I'm not in the habit of just knocking stuff out. Just so I can make quick content for YouTube. Um, which means that I'm apparently a terrible YouTuber. Because keep maintaining a schedule is apparently the most important thing for a YouTuber. And I'm awful at that. So we're nearly ready to actually start getting some paint on these guys. But like I said, everyone underestimates how long it takes to just prepare everything for painting. So that's why we're spending the first, what, almost 10 minutes of this video just watching me clean stuff, drill stuff, glue stuff, pin stuff. All of this is part of the hobby. Um, no one on YouTube talks about it. No one making painting videos really talks about this step and how time consuming it is um, a lot of the time if you're trying to aim to have like a one hour paint job on all of your infantry models then you're going to be spending you know, probably 20 minutes just assembling a model and you might be able to hear my hamster running in, its, in, in their wheel behind me on, on during the voiceover because they like putting food in their wheel <laughs> and then it makes a rattling noise when I'm doing a voiceover um, top tip Use a bit of double-sided sticky tape stuck to a coffee stirrer in order to paint all of your arms at the same time. Works out really well. You can also sometimes leave them attached to the sprue if the connection point is in a place that's actually not going to be visible. But personally I prefer cutting them out, mounting them on a coffee stirrer, painting them all at the same time. And here we go, we've got some paint! It's at eight, about 8 minutes 45 seconds into the video, we're actually painting some stuff. And yeah, I'm doing the majority of the base coats with airbrush in order to save time, because otherwise I would go actually crazy. Although I do actually feel like I go crazy doing this uh, project. Anyway, this is my standard orc skin tone recipe. You can, um, it's probably going to get suggested on this video, but how to paint orc skin fast. It's one of my oldest videos. It's got memes in it. It's back when I did that. Um, you could also see this recipe in my orc, how to paint an orc boy video, where I paint a bad moon orc boy. Um, how to paint flash kits. This is the exact same recipe that I've used on pretty much all of my orcs since time began. I think I was the one that actually um, came up with the idea of painting Cadian flesh tone onto elbows for orcs. And it, and it took the internet by storm. So we're going through it, we're doing all of the base coats here for the flesh, just knocking through them dead fast, getting everything everything done. And when I say knocking through it dead fast, it still took me the best part of an hour to do 13 models and get all the skin done on them, even with an airbrush. But it would have taken me a lot longer than that with a paintbrush, especially to this standard. 
Um, I have methods of painting orc skins with a paintbrush, and it doesn't look as good, and it is more time-consuming. So, it's one of those things. If you want to paint an army, get an airbrush. It will pay for itself in time saved um, over the course of your owning it. So here we go. We're, we're up to painting the uh, Cadian flesh tone on the noses and the elbows and so on. Which means we're nearly done with painting the flesh. So fortunately, people say, you know, oh, painting orcs is painting a lot of green. It's not painting a lot of green at all. Most orcs have just got shirts on. The only bit of the orc that you usually have to paint green on is the arms and the head. So there's not there's not actually a lot of green to be painted. It's like most most of the colors you actually usually paint on orcs are going to be some kind of brown or black in my experience. Sometimes you know a bright color. Now we're painting all of the torsos in um, denim, and I think this is also the same recipe that's in my Bad Moons uh, How to Paint a Bad Moon Orc Boy video. I'm not 100% sure anymore because that was a year ago <laughs> from the time of this voiceover. But I'm pretty sure it just goes uh, Dark Reaper, Rust Grey, Fenrisian Grey as a process for painting the denim. And then painting the pants is just painting, uh, I think, Storm Vermin Fur over black. And that's it. Done. Maybe Bane Blade Brown on the knees. I think it's Bane, Bla Bane Blade Brown on the knees as well. Just to give them a bit of a worn in, dirty look. Because I like my orcs to look a bit like they're the orky version of the War Boys from. Mad Max Fury Road, one of my favourite movies, one of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. And I'm also doing the boots at the same time, I've not even masked off the legs or anything here because I don't really care if I get much overspray from this colour onto the trousers because it's just going to look like dust if I do. So I'm painting the boots with Mornfang Brown and then I think I do a highlight with um, Scrag Brown over the top of that. And I can't remember if there's another highlight after this. But again, everything's just mounted on corks, doing it really fast. Yep, yeah, there's another highlight, it's Cadian Flesh Tone. Like I said, a year ago, completely forgotten how I did all this. I'm learning as much from this video as you are, possibly. So, it's important when you're doing a wash after airbrushing that you let all the airbrushing paint dry because even though it may be touch dry it's not necessarily cured and bonded to the model this is a thing which messes me up a lot and you've got to learn to step away for a couple of hours at least after you've airbrushed some models before putting washes on them because if you do it immediately after you've airbrushed a colour the wash has a tendency to cause the paint you've just airbrushed on to lift up ever so slightly and it can kind of get a bit of an orange peel type texture to it um, and if you don't, there's there's no cure for that. Once it starts happening, it, your model's ruined. Um, and this has been the cause of me having to strip many, many models in the past. So now we're just looking through all the stuff that I've done. This may even be a talky bit. Not quite. Just looking at everything I've done, and I'm going through it, and I'm just... Again, painting all of the washes onto all of the arms, doing some edge highlights here. So this is, uh, like I said, this is a batch version of the Orc Boys video that came out around the same time that I was doing this, uh, in October of 2018. We're just using Fenrisian Grey to paint in the uh, texture along the denim here, along the edges. And it's, uh, it's, it's all fun stuff. We'll be moving over to a kind of more vlog format around about the uh, 16 minute mark when past me will tell you what's going to happen and then you'll see it happen. But this stage it was all going to be time lapse. Now I was going to do the entire video as a time lapse and a voiceover, but decided against it in the end. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge, a bit of a mess this video, quite frankly. Don't blame me for not sticking around. If you don't want to stick around, you know, feel free to leave. I won't take offence. And yep, we're going up to so Fenrisian Grey and then Ulthran Grey, I think believe that is. Batch painting all of this stuff. This is this is all pretty you know, this is the the gravy times. 
this is the happy times. I'm, you know, dead chuffed. I feel like I'm making lots of progress really fast. This, this is the good stuff. But it does kind of get darker as the project goes on. You have been warned. So, have you painted any kill teams? I've only painted two. And I haven't, I have, haven't actually played kill team with either of them. Don't tell anyone. There's a secret between you and me. I haven't played kill team at all. I meant to, but then I didn't because I spent so long painting my kill teams and that I didn't actually have enough time to play it and then everyone stopped playing it around here. So there you go. So oh, we're just we're painting the skull on the back of this jacket and now I'm messing about with uh, weathering sticks. And we're gonna go over to me now. This may look like I have finished something but I haven't. Um, I did a bunch of stuff off camera I'll get one of the guys up. Here's one of the guys. No, not him. Who's good? Who's a good example? This guy. This guy's a good example. Let's zoom in. And get a bit more light on him. Okay, there we go. So, obviously there was the time lapse of doing this. I actually used a little bit of a Dark Reaper glaze just to smooth out the uh, frayed pattern there went through and I painted the stitches on the back of the pants, those that have them, it's only about three of the models I think have them on their pants, went through and highlighted all of the brown leather areas, which on most of them is just the boots, but we've also got this backpack for one of the gunners, uh, the recipe for this is on my Patreon, but short version, it's various combinations of Mornfang Brown, Rhinox Hide, and Cadian Flesh Tone. Um, in order to get this appearance, and some maybe some Agrax Earthshade as well in there. Yeah, there's some of that in there as well. Um, that, and also on the arms of the Burner Boy as well. And the other end of the Burner. So all this has been done in batches. Um, I touched, sided up some areas on the guns which needed it, for example around this handle on this loop, uh, def gun, generally around the hands, the hand areas. Blocked in areas that were going to be metals or I just want to be black black um, that I hadn't been able to do with the airbrush. This arm came off my spanner. And then, after doing all of the brown leather areas, I decided I needed to get somebody finished so that I knew what finished looked like for this mob. Because while I had uh, the boss knob already painted from a previous project, um, and I've given him a matte coat of varnish because he was super, super shiny before, and he's just pinned onto face, he's not actually glued. This is just so I could hold him and stand him upright. Um, yeah, well I've got this guy as my example of what a finish might look like. I'm doing the boots differently on the rest of the boys to how I did them on him. The shirts are the same, the pants are different, but his pants are slightly fancier because he's the boss. The guns are pretty much the same. I'm doing those basically the same as him. Um, but I didn't know exactly what a finish would look like based on the techniques that I'm using now because this guy is about a year old. So. I finished up my commando, who is this guy. I know you can't take dual sluggers, but just look how cool he looks. So these guys I'm going with the kind of evil sons thing. Um, pretty much all the same techniques as I used on the Badman's boy. The only difference is that this is just Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet glazed together with Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh highlights. Um, instead of the yellow recipe. And that's it, the guns are exactly the same across the board. So I'm not going to show much of painting the guns, maybe a little bit, but not much. 
um, because they're going to be the same. But I finished off as much of them as I can, finished his face, and quite frankly, the thing that I've noticed on these orcs is that you only really look at the face and the guns. And if you had a base, you'd probably look at the base. It's one of those old adages of miniature war painting, faces, bases and shields. But in this case, it's faces, bases and dacca. You look at the face, you look at the base, then you look at the guns. And the rest of it is just kind of extra. So, for example, this wristband, I haven't painted it, it's just black. This glove is actually just black. And it has actually got some crap on it from a uh, different colour. Did you know walks have nipples? I didn't, until I painted this guy. Didn't really realise. So, yeah, this guy is practically done. Um, he's got a matte coat on him so I can see what it looked like when the matte was on. Because that's important because some of these Citadel paints dry really, really shiny for some reason. <clears throat> At least mine do. And it can really affect how you think they look. A bit of dust. I think there's some underneath the varnish there, but you probably can't see it on camera. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, this is my commando boy. Um, I didn't actually wash the guns with null oil. Don't think I'm going to on this guy, but I will on the rest of them. And I'll see how much of a difference it makes. I mean, it, they look quite grey in comparison to the boss knob's gun. But this guy's only got pistols, so I don't think it'll really notice. Um, if it does, once I've painted everyone else and his gun's just standing out as being super great, then I'll go back and I'll apply a null oil wash over it, just to darken it down. And that's pretty much it. The pants, I've done nothing to, apart from apply washes, because the kind of the brown, worn-in dirt look on their knees and across their butt. It does it does everything I need it to, that plus the wash. The pants are really just not a very interesting place to look on an orc boy. Like I said, hit the focal points in order to get batch painted stuff looking good. And that is the faces, the weapons, and the base. That's where you need to concentrate. The rest of it, your eye just kind of glosses over, especially in a group shot, you're not going to notice. So I took a little bit longer on this guy because I was painting him individually. But I'm now going to go through and I'm going to do the torsos for everyone. So, moving forwards. My next stage, after doing the shirt, the pants and the boots, is to paint all of the metal and the straps with Rhinox hide. <coughs> then paint the metal as I did in the Bad Moon's Orc Boy tutorial video which will just be gently sponging on some stuff with one of these boyos because these are actually turning out to be really really good for this um, then painting the straps and then painting the metallic areas and then the torsos are done and I can get that done on pretty much all of them up to a point for example if they've got something unique on them like this loincloth or the burner boy also has a loincloth, which to be fair, the burner's going to be in front of, so I really need to paint the back of it. Go so stick the burner in where it's supposed to go. Um, it's going to obscure the loincloth significantly, so I'm probably just going to paint that in a kind of dark grey colour. Um, and then paint the faces, and then once I've got all of those steps done on the boys, torsos of which there's five with shirts on the burner who's not got much to do and then I've got the spanner and the naked torso gunner um, who may actually end up being the torso for my looter at the end of it which kind of ties these guys together because there's a looter spanner and this will be a looter they're going around without any shirts on I'm not sure if this will fit over this arm. I think it will. It's got a bit of blue tack on here. Yeah, it'll fit. It'll fit over that shoulder pad. I wasn't sure if it would, but it does. 
Pit has a war bike torso. Um, yeah, these guys just need their metallics doing on their torsos, but they still have some straps on, so they're going in with the same batch. Oops. Dropped yet another bit. So I've got a total of eight Hawk Boy torsos to finish. And once these are done, and I will include painting the metallic gubbins on his head, but probably not the backpack. I'll probably do him separately for the backpack. Basically anyone that's a specialist, which is these two. And who is the other specialist? Oh, the boss knob is the other specialist, so he's already done. Because of reasons, boss knob is specialist. This guy, this backpack goes on to one of the gunners. And I've also got the rocket launch backpack. It's a whole bunch of stuff, so. Gunner's backpack. And rocket launcher backpack. These may be on the wrong orcs, based upon the length of the pins. Um, yeah, backpacks taking a bit more extra work. It's we're almost at the point where batch painting is no longer viable, and I've still got my three grots to paint. They haven't had anything done to them since I did their teeth, basically. Um, they're going to get done in their own batch towards the end. But I want to get as much of the boys done as possible, and then I'll be doing the weapons separately. So we'll come back. After I have done the straps and metals on all of these guys. Okay. Alright. Rhinox hide straps and metal bits done on all the boys' torsos. Um, going to do the metal next. I'm not necessarily got on full coverage over the black. But that's not really important because I'm going to be sponging and it all adds to the texture of the surface. Um, naked guy. One thing I'm going to do, though, if I carry on with that, is I notice this spanner's got a nice little satchel here. I am going to paint this style of leather onto that side. I am edge highlighting all of the guns. Also decided to just paint this Burner Boy's backpack uh, black with a little bit of a reflect on it. There, that's actually, if I move the light, move the thing. You can see that's paint, there's one painted on, there's one real one. Um, yep. Yeah. Ed highlighted all of the guns. I uh, haven't decided on which bits are going to be painted red just yet, but they will get something. Or some checkers, or something like that. Time consuming process. Now, all done. Next up, I will be painting a bunch of metallics, I think. Yes. I'll be painting a bunch of the metal bits on the guns. So I'm going to be using uh, VMA Chrome for that. Actually, no, no, I'm not doing that. Ha, ah, I lied. Next step is weathering the guns. So, just like in the Orc video, weathering stick and paints. Uh, sc scribe brown and then Chrome. So I'm doing that next. Let's have a bit of a time lapse.
it's going well. The only thing that's really slowing me down is because I'm painting uh, Shooter Boys, Burner Boys, Rocket Launcher, Tank Buster, I guess, Guy with a Big Shooter, Grotz, and a Spanner. All in the same batch. And there's a lot of going back and forth, so I'll zoom out again. So, Shooter Boys are basically done. Um, a couple of them have a few little bits to paint. All of the shooters are done. So there's one, there's the third one. I just need to paint the wrappings on this guy, paint the gloves on this one, and then their arms are completely done. But the wrappings are tied in with the wrappings on the rest of the models, of which there are many. Like These torsos have wrappings on. The burner's got wrappings on it. The rocket launcher has wrappings on it. So they've been tied down waiting for those. Um, but yeah. This shooter boy's glued together. He's ready. He's done. Uh, maybe a non-oil wash on the guns, but I'll do that later. But I've also got this spanner here. Uh, wrong way. Zoom in. Who I'm painting, um, and his just his custom Mega Blaster's taking me ages. And just trying to figure out what colours to do everything, without making it just like too noisy and over the top. This I need to paint copper because I I've already got the rule in my orc forces that anything that's like one of these big balls is copper for some reason. Need to paint this battery pack, finish that off yellow. Painting the yellow is taking ages because I'm covering yellow over black and it just takes a while. Um, need to paint these things up here as light sources. But yeah, it's nearly done. It's so close, the custom Mega Blaster. And then there's the death gun. The death gun is taking ages. Um, it's getting there, but I've got to paint this rocket. All of these... Um, Ridged pipes, I can't remember the correct word for them. Little details like this totem. And the red bits are mostly painted. Some of the cables need highlighting to make them look a bit shinier. Yeah, it's all like close. I'm like 80% done. The last 20% for some reason always takes half the time doing everything. The big shooter itself is painted. The bullets aren't. And this guy's wrist thing isn't. And neither is the strap. The rocket launcher cables are painted. The rocket isn't. Most of the actual launcher is painted. Um, I've got these wrappings to paint on his wrist. One here and one on the other arm. And then I've got to paint the rocket itself. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that. I think I might want to paint it uh, white or light grey. Just so that it's got something that's a little bit contrasty to the rest of the colour scheme. And most of the heavy weapons have white on them somewhere, apart from the big shooter, so that's a thing. But yeah, it's all just kind of plodding along through these orcs at the moment. And then I've got the grots to paint. And then, right, painted all the wrappings on all the guys. As we can see here, that's just... Uh, Sandry Dust base with an Agra. Nope, that's the wrong one. Where's it gone? There. With an Agrax Earthshade wash. Touched up with Sandry Dust again. And then uh, Flayed One Flesh highlight. And then using Rhinoxide just to reinforce the, the gaps in the wrappings there. But to be honest, you could probably skip the Agrax Earthshade wash entirely. I don't think it's necessary. So yeah, everything, everyone that's got wrappings has got that done on them. So the Burner Boy's ankles, a couple of the other boys have gotten on the around their boots. But these two guys were the most prominent. So since this has finished up the arms for this shooter boy, they're now glued on. And that basically finished up most of this rocket launcher, so that's glued on now. This is still detached. Um, I'm going to paint the rocket with the airbrush. I'm going to do it 
uh, predominantly white with probably some decals on just to save time. Um, I'm gonna do a similar thing with these rockets on his backpack just so that they stand out from this area the black metal down here and his jacket. I've painted his shoulder pads red I need to finish that off and I painted um, some other bits red so for example uh, the Burner Boys this handle's now red painted his little loincloth red. I came to the conclusion all loincloths are red so if you've got a loincloth it's red so this guy's loincloth base coat to dip Mephiston red uh, the grots with loincloths also red, although quite tempted to put a bullseye on them. Or possibly I might just put a bullseye on their backs. Because they've both got naked tors naked upper torsos. So I was considering uh, seeing if I can find a bullseye to put on there. Possibly off a decal sheet. Because, you know, grot shields. But yeah, the loincloths are red. Everything is red. I am Cyclops. No. Going with red as well for the Spanner's mech tools on his backpack, again because it's, it's, kind of, it's the uniforming, the unifying colour is the colour red amongst these guys. Yeah, I've got all the shooter boys with their red guns. They've got red on them, but most of the other boys don't have some red on them. The Spanner's only other bit of red is uh, this kind of gauntlet thing here. So got some red from the front, some red from the back. Um, I'm probably going to paint up some shoulder pads for the boys so they've got red on, so they've got some red that you can see from behind them as well as in front of them, just to, again, make it a bit more uniform. Like this guy's holding his pistol up so you can see the red from behind, as well as the red in front. I want red visible from every angle on these guys. So what I'm probably going to do on this guy is I've got red visible from above there, got the cable there but the shoulder pads these shoulder pads work well on all angles what I'll do is there will be like red nose cones on some of these rockets red white and black essentially is the colors I've gone with the burner I'm not sure if his loincloth's actually going to be that visible once his arms are on um, the answer is probably not but he's got a little bit of red in his gun and I'll need to find some way to get some red onto the fuel tanks on the back here. Not sure how to do that just yet. Otherwise, the big shooter guy who's actually got a naked torso. Uh, this fella has got his big shooter, which has got a red thing on it. And I'm going to be painting this glyph on the back here red as well. So yeah, red coming and going, that's what I'm doing at the moment, not particularly interesting, just base coating it and then a quick highlight with Evil Sun Scarlet and an edge highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone, it's dead, dead simple red recipe, it's nowhere near as complicated to say my yellow recipes or anything like that. I'm also plugging away at the yellow, on any bits that need to be yellow, it's mostly anything that's a pipe that leads to something fiery, so it's pretty much just on the burner boy. And there was one other bit that was yellow that I was painting. Oh, it was on the the Mega Guns battery pack. The custom Mega Blasters battery pack. And this cable I'm not I might also paint yellow. Just to kind of tie it in. I I might attempt hazard stripes, I haven't attempted them in years. I don't normally bother with them. But I think it would look appropriate on this thing. Not so much on these. Um, so, we'll give it a go. So, onwards, painting red. Okay, update on progress. We have all the shooter boys are done with one thing left to do. And that is the lenses on the goggles for the two that have those features. They're currently just black. But they're glued together. The guns are all done. Everything's done with them apart from just the lenses on the goggles. We also have 
Uh, big shooter boy. He is complete. Um, oh, I need to do a little bit more on that wristband. I keep forgetting about it. Mostly just needs a normal oil wash and a bit of edge highlighting. Oh, and this tooth. There's so many little things I keep finding on these models that I've forgotten to paint. Or just didn't notice until something else was painted. So, there you go. Big Shooter Boy. Pretty much done as well. Like 95%. The Rocket Launcher Boy is glued together. I don't know if he was before. I can't remember now. The only thing not on is this backpack and his head. Which... I've started uh, dry brushing the old gas mask there. Just needs some edge highlight and to paint the leathery bits of the gas mask, or the rubbery bits of the gas mask, black. So, nearly done there. I'm going to be painting the rockets with red warheads, white bodies, and black probably with some kind of stripe on. Um, maybe black with a white stripe or white with a black stripe, not sure yet, on the fins. And we're doing the same on the ones on his backpack, so they're going to take a while because this one I can do with an airbrush. These ones I will have to uh, do with a regular brush, and that will take a while to build up the white on there. Started working on the chopper for the guy with the death gun. I have repainted some bits on this boss knob, uh, mostly just these shoulder pad areas here, just to add a bit more red onto the model so that he ties in better with the rest of the kill team. The burner boy, aside from having his loincloth finished, um, and these two bits on his burner painted, not really touched much on him yet. The looter, uh, his backpack's glued on, painted that glyph red. And I'm working on his head at the moment. So that's just blue tacked on. Just blocking in the areas that need to be done. I painted all the tongues as well while I was doing this stuff. The spanner. We're getting there now with the spanner. His custom Mega Blaster is basically done. Painted this as a nice glowing orange button. Painted in the battery in a bit, but a bit of a brighter yellow. And these little kind of light bulb vacuum chamber valve thingies. Painted all those in with a blue. I need to do some touch ups around the head. And started painting the gubbins on his face. I also painted the boss pole that he's got. That's just administratum grey. And then weathered up. And then I also painted the backpack red. And weathered it up the same way I did the rest of the red stuff and left the spanner black but weathered it up. That's all the orcs. I've been working on the grots a little bit so their red bits have been painted red. And this guy's had his little uh, bandana painted white. This guy again red loincloth started blocking in the metallic areas on him. Painted his goggles black just so that they're black at the moment. And the leader grot. Again, painted his goggles black. Painted his trousers black because he's getting black trousers. He actually has trousers, unlike the other grots. And that's it so far. It's getting close. Um, but yeah, there's just always these tiny little bits that I keep missing. And it's mostly just the specialists to go now. The spanner, burner, and looter. It's mostly just those guys holding everything up, and the grots aren't going to take that much time to be once I start working on them properly. I've just been doing colours on them while the colours were ready on the rest of the palette, or I was, you know, just wanted a little break from painting orc. So I painted grot instead. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off all of the faces that need to be finished off. So they're done and glued on. And then I'm going to move on to finishing off this chopper and this arm so I can get that on the looter. Um, the only things left after that point are to paint rockets, basically. Uh, rockets and grots, that's all that will be left. 
and a few little bits on this burner, uh, such as these pipes need finishing off and tidying up, and a few little areas need to be painted metallic on that burner. I just need to fill this hole with some green stuff that's in his arm and paint this dial on the back of the burner tank and paint his face mask which has gone missing wait, no, there it is but that's just a bit of primer than an airbrush job to paint that and then on to making bases and then we're done so, yeah, close very close it's a lot of work this Better be worth it. All right. Um, I can't remember how long ago the last video I did on this was. I think it was two days ago. I kind of went all weird and you know, full on finish your hobby mode because I'm not enjoying this anymore. Truth time, kind of hate these guys now, but I'm going to finish them. Um, this usually happens to me about who the, towards the very end of a project I start looking at it and I start going I hate it I hate them all I think they're ugly um, and it's because of all the, the tiny little mistakes I make along the way build up and then all I can think about is them uh, and once I finished them got them based uh, let them sit for a couple of weeks I'll go back to them one day and I'll go you know are they not bad? Maybe that'll happen this time. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I just really hate them. I just hate something after I painted it. And that's usually when I sell it straight away on eBay. Because I just don't want to look at it anymore. Anyway, you may notice that there's nothing on cork anymore of this lot. They're all on a uh, little base. The only reason I've been putting them on these little bases, they're just pinned on, they're not glued on or anything is so that I can get my corks back for using for doing other things. I've only got a limited number, I need to get some more. But they're all pretty much done. There's like a few little finishy bits on them. So let's go through what's done. I, can't. Um, I have assembled and mostly finished off this big shooter guy. Every time I do one of these updates, I realize that I hadn't actually finished this, this wristband, but everything else is done on this big shooter guy. Not that happy with how the leather's turned out. And I'll get into that in the conclusion of the roundup at the end of this video. All the shooter boys together and done. I still need their matte coats, but I'm doing them all together once I've done the bases. So I think, I should, I think this guy I've been shown before. Shooters are coming out nice. I put an on oil wash on all the shooters and the weapons at, the, at this point. So it's kind of desaturated the red a little bit and darkened it down just a smidge. Um, I just went with a white bandana because I thought it actually contrasted quite nicely with everything else. And the colour schemes for these guys seems to have been red, white and black. Um, plus, you know, the blue of the shirt and so on. Which seems to be the Evil Sun's colours. So This burner boy painted his cigar and chuffed with how that's turned out. Looks like he's taken a puff on it right now. Um, dug up the welded mask flip lid and paint that just did an airbrush black primer uh, gunmetal spray and then some wash with, the, with the, this one Agrax Earth Shade Gloss which I used to kind of get onto a lot of stuff and it looks weirdly shiny now but everything is getting a matte coat even all of the metallics so it's super shiny now, it won't be shiny at the end. I also went in and I repainted some of the bits on his back. So I repainted these pipes to be not rusted and corroded because if they're rusted and corroded then all the shit would, uh, sorry, all of the um, burner fuel would come out. I kind of need to tidy this up, don't know if I will. And so these are now copper, this is now aluminium I guess. And. I slapped some of that Agrax Earth Shade gloss over everything to try and get some brown in there. But again, once the matte coat's on, we'll see how it actually looks. He's glued together now, there's a few touch-ups that need doing, but I'll do the touch-ups at the end when I'm feeling a bit more objective. I'm going to put a bit of a scorch on the end of this as well with the airbrush. 
I'm also going to do the same, put a bit of the scotch on this boyo with the airbrush at the same time, just a bit of black paint. Rocket boy, rocket launcher, the, it's an orc gunner, right? Orc gunner in the kill team. His rocket's now the colours, red warhead, white body, black fins, just like I said. And so are the ones on his backpack, which is now painted. And he's just come out of his little hole on his base. He's only got one foot in. All glued together, just again, basing. That's all that's needed on them. That guy hasn't changed. Still ha I keep forgetting to paint the wristband and the glove. In fact, I'll put him over there, separate. The looter. That's right, that's where the chopper was going, on the looter. You weren't expecting that, were you? He's all glued together. I had to use super glue to keep this one on. Plastic cement wasn't going to do it. There isn't actually much of a good join um, between the two shoulder joints because this isn't really a torso that you should put a, lo uh, a looter's gun on. It's not one of the ones that came with it, it's just a regular boy's torso. I drilled a hole in to put this backpack on. Because I had the gun, I didn't have the frame for the gun. Um, which I also, I don't like the frame for the gun. So I need something to do with this other arm. So he's just carrying a chopper. You know, just in case. For close encounters. So I need to do a bit more on this little laser sight up here. Get finder, I guess it is. But I, re I like how his sunglasses turned out. He's the, he's a cool boy. So yeah. Again, a bit glossy from the Agrax Earthshade gloss. That'll all get knocked back with the varnish. And that's everything that's done. Still to do. We've got the spanner. As you can see, I've painted a lot more on him. He's now fully assembled as well. The old gubbins on the head. This bit's gone all corroded and nasty. Um, this was an accident, actually, this little bit here. I got a thumbprint with some paint on it. Um, don't tell anyone. But yeah, I got a big blob of, of uh, rhinoxide on the butt of this gun. I didn't notice until it completely dried and I couldn't get it off. So I just ran some nylac oxide over the entire thing. <laughs> and uh, now it just looks like it's corroded, which is fine. Still need to paint the little spikes on his boots, but they're barely visible, so I'm not that worried about them. Painted all the gubbins. These are just Lothurn blue with some, and then Lothurn grey highlighted up. This is just Administratum grey, and then weathered. Um, still need to paint this sack and this bag, that's all that's really left on him, plus the little teethy bits on his boots. And the grots are mostly done. So here's one, still need to finish off the knife, the big, his big knife he's got. I was trying to figure out how to make it look like it was plastic, but uh, without paint, painting it a bright colour or writing Nerf on it, I don't know how that would work. But um, yeah, gone through, highlighted his uh, goggles, painted in all of his little leathery bits, leather straps. This is just a dry brush of gun metal, um, then followed by another bit of that Agrax Earthshade gloss to give it a bit of a greasy look, because their guns aren't very good. Crop blasters. Sandry dust, the same as the rest of the wrapping, wrappings. Sandry dust and Agrax Earthshade over the top. Need to touch that up and get it to the same standard as the rest of the wrappings that are knocking about, so I need to dig out my flayed one flesh for that. Uh, oh, there it is. But yeah, it's mostly painting his belt buckle and painting the bits that are still black on here. And then he's pretty much done. The other guy, again, same state, less to, left to paint because I only have to do the raptor areas. So it's wrapping on his gun and his feet. And then he's done. And the last one, this boy, I need to do a little bit more on his trousers, tidy up this case a bit more, paint this ball in here a different metallic colour, like copper probably. And then, oh, this wristband and this grenade, which I'm going to paint the same colour as each other. And then I'm calling it on that guy. So that's where I'm at. Um, 
Painting a kill team is a lot harder than painting a squad. I will elaborate on why, and that is because you're bopping back and forth painting lots of different kinds of models. I did the shooter boys really quickly compared to everything else. These shooter boys, zero problems whatsoever, no problemo. Very, very easy to paint. I know exactly what I was going to do with them, and I did it. I executed it really quickly. But they were slowed down by the fact that I was painting all of these. It's these four. The big shooter guy didn't really phase me that much. But these four boys, these really just took all of the time. Like, painting one random burner boy in amongst a bunch of everything else is really distracting because I can't get into the mindset of, okay, now I'm painting a bunch of burners. What should burners look like? I was flipping from flipping between a bunch of things and I was just like, this was sitting in the back of my mind. It's like, I don't really know how I'm going to paint that. Same with the looter. Like, I got the backpack done because it was just, that was mostly airbrush work and then done. But then I had this big death gun to paint and I was like, there's so much stuff on it. And it's so much stuff that's different to everything else that's so far in the kill team. Like, painting the chopper was easy. Painting the death gun just took me ages for some reason. Again, couldn't get my head into it. Painting the tank buster. Like, for the most part was fine, but then I came to painting the rockets and I was like, how am I going to paint those? What colours will look good on that? Like, everything else that was just kind of shared with the rest of the boys, super easy. The things that were unique, that's where all my time's gone. This spanner has been bane of my life. I mean, A, it's got terrible, terrible composition as a model. Because there, I mean, you can kind of fix it with paint job, and I haven't. I haven't fixed it with paint job. This is a bad example of how to paint a spanner effectively, I guess. Um, there is too many things going on that are completely distracting your eye away from his face. Face of an infantry model should always be the focal point. He's got a big blob of brown on his chin. I have to fix that. Um, yeah, face of your infantry model is always the focal point. And a lot of orc models suffer from this, especially if they've got a boss pole, which this guy does, or they've got some kind of weird gubbins going on. And this guy's got all of this stuff, all of his details crammed in immediately like adjacent to his face. So I've got this red gauntlet over here, which I thought would be cool at the time when I was painting, you know, this arm separately. And I was like, that's, you know, that uh, red, good idea for the gauntlet. But in hindsight, it's like, it's very much suffering from being overcrowded with detail and things to look at. that Your eye doesn't know where to look, and you don't even really notice he has a face a lot of the time. So I'm not a fan of this model. It was compositionally questionable. Um... In comparison, the loot is actually not too bad. It's got a very clear focal point. It's his face. And then when it's around that, like that, it's the gun. Very simple. From the back, you're looking at the backpack. Dead, dead simple composition. The boys, same. Even the boss knobs, actually not too bad. And that's part of the reason why I usually paint the orc guns black rather than metallic. It's metallic's tend tendency to reflect lights and draw attention away. And because orcs hold their guns basically underneath their chins all the time, their guns are in close proximity to their face, and I don't want them to steal focus from the face. And so, you know, hence this. Bit of a spot colour on the cable. Actually kind of regret that. Don't think a big yellow pipe is a great plan. Um, and then a little bit of colour on the shoulder pads. To, it's not... You know, it's not bad. The face has got this big collar behind it, which kind of helps frame it. The boss pole isn't super over the top and ostentatious and making it hard to spot anything. But again, this is a problem a lot of Orc models have from Games Workshop. And from most places, because Games Workshop kind of set the style for what um, this kind of Orc looks like. Um, I think it's part of the reason why the Orc Mega Boss is such a popular model with competition painters is because the composition is all right there in the sculpt. The armour is usually like one colour or two colours and it all frames the 
face and everything on that model is leading the eye towards where the face is so you can look at that particular piece of detail. Um, a lot of the space orcs do not have that same advantage. Most of the space orcs are really noisy and compositionally questionable. Again, the boys, the flat out orc boys, not so bad. They're actually pretty good at it because of the way that they're structured. You know, they've got nothing above their head that's behind them. They're actually pretty good. And I think the Orc Boys kit is you know, one of the strongest kits that Games Workshop make for Orcs. It's one of the oldest kits. It's one of the better kits. Um, the War Bikers are also pretty good. But I think if I ever have to paint another tank buster, I'll not be happy. If I ever have to paint another looter, I'll not be happy. And I don't ever want to have to paint another burner. It's like the burner and the, the burner slash looters kit, which is the same box, um, I think is an awful kit from a painting point of view. Um, the burners, not so much as the looters. The looters are terrible. Really don't like that. But yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this kit. I mean, even Games Workshop's own painters seem to have trouble with figuring out how to paint the backpacks for the burners. Um, and the looters are just the guns are just kind of bad. But the other kits that I like. So you got the boys kit. I like the boys kit, although the knob in it is awful. The orc knobs kit is gold. I hope that they never retire it because it's such a good kit. Orc knobs are what orcs should look like. This kit is... it defines the entire army in my opinion. The flash git kit, also good, suffers from being flash gits, but you can paint them in a way that doesn't completely overwhelm your eye. Um, but yeah, the Burners and Looters kit is a bad kit, compositionally speaking. The Tank Busters aren't great. The Commandos are okay. I don't have them, but just looking at the commandos, you know, they're basically just boys with a few little, with a backpack and a gas mask. It's pr still pretty good. Um, the grot kit is characterful but awful. They need to re they need to retire the plastic grot kit and get a new one going because those models date all the way back to Gorkum Walker, which is was what ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety nine ish maybe even 97 i don't remember off the top of my head it was a long time ago and they were metal grots and then they got recut into plastic and they're still around and they're bad and even the forge world grots aren't much better they suffer from normal forge world problems which i'm not going to get into so yeah and compared to the new oric stuff the oric stuff is way better um, the new Speed Freak stuff is way better, so much better than the old Orc, old Orc vehicles. Um, but yeah, I never want to paint a burner or a looter again, especially not this Spanner Boy. I never want to paint this Spanner Boy ever, ever again. I've painted him twice now. It's actually the same model. We painted it. Uh, there we go. I'm on to the next bit. Painting that backpack, finishing off the grots, then I'm on to bases. Bases are going to be done in a separate video, um, so it'll go point straight to them being done and on bases, but I'll be doing the bases in a separate video so that you can watch that as a tutorial. Um, it'll also be a review because I'm going to be using some resin bases that I bought, well I didn't buy. I have some resin bases. I'm going to be using these for the orcs because now they're on 32 mils, and I didn't have enough 32 mils, so you know these just arrived just in time. Anyway, finishing stuff is what I'm doing. Finish your hobby. Who hurts? Right, I'm done. Well, I'm kind of done. Everyone is finished from a painting point of view uh, the bases haven't been done 
bases are over here. I am yet to make them. But uh, yeah, the painting is done. So every single one of them has been painted and they've had their matte coat now, so they're looking nice and flat, which is important. And they're also protected from me. 13 models, 13 orc kill team, 100 points on the nose, for those wondering. Probably none of you. Um, I have to do the bases. I'm going to be showing how to make the bases. These are 32 mils. I've got some 25 somewhere as well. I'm going to show you how to make the bases in another video, um, which should already be up at the same time as this, if not before. So you'll be able to see that there. So we're going to go straight on to the next shots, the close-up shots of these guys all finished. And I'll go to voiceover where I'll talk about the trials and tribulations of painting this orc kill team and why I never want to paint another orc kill team ever again. Okay, on to that. All, all right, um, it's been a year since I actually painted this kill team because I was so burnt out on painting this kill team that it took me this long to actually put all the footage together in some format and actually make a video and it's over an hour long if you made it this far then well done congratulations to you oh the kill team it was it was hard work painting this kill team um and the only other kill team i painted since then was a space marine kill team and that was also hard work for exactly the same reason this was hard work and that is because I created a list. I created my 100 points of kill team. And then I went off and I painted it. And that meant that I was painting lots of different models. So if I'd painted you know, a box of Orc Boys, done them, that wouldn't have been a problem. If I'd painted a box of Burner Boys, that wouldn't have been a problem. If I painted a box of Looters, not a problem. A box of Knobs also not a problem but at that point I'm basically painting an army the problem is painting just what you need for a kill team in one batch is just so much back and forth and getting confused and yeah there's some stuff that you can share between them for example on all the orcs I did all of the skin all of the trousers all of the shirts all the same managed to do them all at the same time and what I should have then done is set aside the burner the looter the gunners, the grots, the mech boy, all off to one side and done them individually one at a time. Because then I would have been able to entirely focus on those models and I didn't do that and I wish I had. But instead I was focusing on trying to get this done fast and my brain was going, gotta batch paint them to do them fast. And that's, that's that didn't work. It took me as long possibly longer due to various types of burnout during the project to actually get this 13 models done it took me months to get 13 models done i did not do it just for october i started this kill team i think at the beginning of september maybe even the end of august and i didn't finish it before the end of october 2018 um, like the, all the October releases came and went and I still hadn't finished these these models they look really good now um, they're still in my display case and I really love them and I'm at, like I said during the video there's a point in a project where I absolutely hate the project and I just want it to be over and the worst thing is during that time I'd have a tendency to rush and make bad decisions about my paint choices but now I'm at that point where I'm like, yes, these look great. It's a really nice 100 points kill team that I have never played a game with, but I'm really happy that I painted them. Now, a year later. That, that, that's kind of how it goes. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a really, really long one. And I don't blame you if you dunked out early. But uh, thanks for watching. Give us a like, a share, comment below. Uh, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. I probably won't do a long project video like this again. Unless there's a lot of demand for it. In which case it'll probably be an army project rather than a kill team project. And it'll probably actually be in many, many parts. Um, and spread, spread so you know you can absorb... <laughs> watch it at, at your own pace but yeah thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you around bye bye